this as well. Joining us right now is American Petroleum Institute President and CEO Mike Summers. Mike, it's good to see you this morning. I want to get into the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, but first I've got to get your take on the UK Prime Minister resigning today. How do you see it? Well, let's remember that the United Kingdom has had a failed energy policy over the course of the last decade as well. And that contributed, I think, to some of the instability that we're seeing. They banned fracking. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why they're seeing record high energy prices in the United Kingdom. If we don't do what's right here in the United States, we could be going that way, too. We have to get the policies right if we want to get the energy prices down and re return to a place of uh, American energy leadership. Well, look, the president has been bleeding the Strategic Petroleum Reserve dry. He's readying the sale of 15 million additional barrels from the uh, emergency reserve. He says he's uh, doing this to curb gas prices uh, and, and offset OPEC's production cuts. But we all know it's ahead of the midterms. Here's what Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm had to say about this timing of the move yesterday. Watch this. This is about what people are feeling on the ground. This is not about the political moment. It's not about the political moment, she said. Biden is, says he is willing to authorize more sales from the Strategic Reserve if needed. Mike, we're at the lowest level since 1984. What do you say? Well, unfortunately, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve has become the strategic political reserve, I think, over the course of the last uh, couple of years. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that the SPR right now is at the lowest level since 1984. But here's the difference between now and 1984. We actually use 27 percent more oil today than we did in 1984. This is a very precarious position we're in today at a time of dramatic geopolitical upheaval. We need to have that SPR in place and at, at the right levels dealing with the current geopolitical situation we're in today. Tiana? So we know that because oil is fungible, even though the U.S. has this embargo on Russian oil and even though Russia has stopped its oil flows towards a lot of Europe, it's still being sold elsewhere and those jacked up prices are being tr are trickling down to us. How much does this domestic you know, uh, minimization of our own oil production and our reliance on the SPR uh, provide more of a profit margin to Russia and provide more of a profit margin uh, to our adversaries. Well, one thing that this administration has done from the very beginning is they've tried to do everything they could to pre prevent production here in the United States. Uh, they started the uh, administration by banning leasing and permitting on federal lands. We're currently at a point where we have less federal leasing from this administration than we've had in any administration since World War II. We're at record level lows. Uh, at this point in the Obama administration, they've done 60 leases in the offshore. So far, uh, they've only done six. Uh, this administration continues to talk out of both sides of its mouth, saying wow. they want more production, but not putting uh, more uh, policies in place that would actually encourage more production. Here's Leo Kelly. Um, so, OK, so we uh, we understand the problem is massive. Uh, we know we're we're headed for uh, this Great Britain outcome, this Germany outcome. My question is simple. If we get a change in leadership, how much damage has been done and how fast can we turn this around? Is it possible to turn this around fast enough that we don't go down this path for years and years to come? Well, we are blessed in the United States with really the unsung hero of uh, American oil production, and that's private property rights. Mm. Uh, fortunately, we still have private property here in the United States. Most of the Permian, all of the Permian in, in the state of Texas, for example, is on private property, and we can continue to mm. produce. What we need is policies that are going to continue uh, to push uh, American producers and, and to say to American producers that this is a long-term strategic asset for the United States. States. And that's exactly what oil and natural gas is. It's a long-term strategic asset that we're going to need to provide for both lower consumer costs and for us to succeed on the world economic stage. You know, you look at this strategic uh, petroleum reserve at these low levels. Donald Trump filled it up uh, and, and paid great prices for it uh, when oil prices were near the lows. But this president, President Biden, says that he's going to fill it up. What is he going to fill